Um, just before we are going to hear from uh, Ken Livingston, our last speaker this morning, um, I'm absolutely delighted that we've got with us Mustafa Bugauti, who is the Minister of Information from the Palestinian National Authority. And Mustafa is going to be speaking at the Enough Rally um, going on in Trafalgar Square later this afternoon, which you're not allowed to go to, I'm afraid, uh, by order of Gavin. But I'm sure hundreds and thousands of will and will share their notion of solidarity and their support to end the turmoil about what's going on in, in Palestine. So I'm very pleased that Mustafa has got the opportunity to say a few word, quick words to us this morning. Thank you, Mustafa. First of all, uh, let me thank you for giving me this wonderful opportunity to speak to you, and I wish you the best of success in your conference. And uh, let me start by saying that this week, the Israeli occupation of Palestinian land has completed its 40th year, 40 years of military occupation. And at this very moment, the Israeli occupation of Palestinian land has also completed a full transformation in what can be described as a, an apartheid racist system of discrimination. In the words of President, ex-President Jimmy Carter and many of the leaders of South Africa, this has become a much worse apartheid system than what prevailed in South Africa at one point of time. In a situation where the Israeli income is 30 times more than the Palestinian income, we are obliged to buy products at the Israeli market price. In a situation where Israel is confiscating our water, and allows Israeli illegal settlers to use 40 times more of our water than we are allowed to use. In a situation where even roads and streets have been segregated from each other, and a whole nation has been segregated and cut into pieces of prison-like entities. In a situation where a whole people has become imprisoned by 540 military permanent checkpoints and 610 flying checkpoints, in addition to a wall that has become three times as long and twice as high as Berlin Wall used to be. In a situation where the Israeli government allows itself to withhold 70% of the income of the Palestinian Authority, depriving us from the ability of paying workers their salaries, of paying the salaries of teachers, doctors, nurses, and depriving us from the ability of buying medications that are very much needed to treat cancer patients and patients with serious sicknesses. In a situation where 11,000 Palestinians are kept in prison, including 376 children and 120 women, two of whom are in jail with their children. In a situation where Palestinians have managed to build what can easily be described as the only democracy, the only real democracy in the Arab world, we're being punished by arresting one-third, 45 members of our parliament. They are arrested and put in Israeli jails. We are punished by arresting our ministers who have been put under administrative detention using a British mandate law of 1945, which was, by the way, revoked by the British government, and Israel is still using it. This democracy, the first democracy in the Arab world, is being punished by the world. And what is the alternative model they are offering to us as a model of democratic development? It's Iraq. We have made offers as a Palestinian National Unity Government. We've made offers for complete calm. We've just declared last Monday an offer for complete, comprehensive, reciprocal, and simultaneous ceasefire with Israel. We've made an offer for complete, comprehensive peace based on the Arab Initiative. And we've made an offer for a complete exchange of prisoners with Israel. The answer we heard from Israel is 
No. No to peace. No to negotiations. No to ending occupation. And no to recognizing the Palestinian government. How could the world community and the Quartet speak about negotiations when one side is neglected and not recognized and not allowed to participate in negotiations? During the last weeks, the Israeli army has increased its policy of extrajudicial judicial execution. Bushra Brigish, a 17-year-old girl, was studying for her exams. She's the exact age of my daughter. She was studying for her exams in her room when an Israeli army soldiers this, who were looking for her brother could not find him and decided to shoot her. They shot her in the head and killed her instantly. Three days ago, they entered a house of an old man, 67 year old in Hebron, and asked to see his brother, his sons. When he brought his sons, they started beating him, them. And when he tried to protect his sons, they shot him in the head and killed him. And then they shot his wife, who's 65 years old. And then they shot both brothers. And then they beat both daughters. And then they left. Israel, at this very moment, feels completely impunitive to international law, completely impunitive to international humanitarian law. And Israel, which is now the fifth largest military power in the world, with 400 or more nuclear heads, which is, has become the fourth largest military exporter in the world. Israel, which sells weapon, weapons even to Britain and Sweden and Norway, is described as a victim in this conflict. We ask you, as good people, as people who represent the best traditions in British politics, we ask you to pressure and ask your government to recognize the Palestinian National Unity Government in Palestine, a government that represents 96% of the Palestinian electorate. You cannot go more democratic than that. You cannot go more representative than that. We ask you to ask your government to stop its objections inside the, United, the European Union to recognize the Palestinian National Unity Government and deal with it. We ask you to ask your government to support the Arab Initiative for Peace, for ending this conflict on the basis of two-state solution. We ask you to ask your government to demand the release of our ministers and our members of parliament who have been democratically elected. Palestine is probably the most important moral issue of the 21st century. Palestine, to us, is like India was at one point of time when the people of India were demanding their independence. Palestine for us is like the case of South Africa when people in South Africa were demanding the end of part apartheid. And Palestine for us, and I hope for you, should be the case where justice is lost and where justice must be made. There comes a time in people's life when they cannot take injustice anymore. And this time has come to Palestine. Thank you.